tonight I'll be talking a bit about Joseph and I'll try to cover from Genesis 30 to Genesis 46. But before I go into um, the story, how many of you have big dreams? How many of you are, how many of you are big dreamers? Okay, very good. I'm also a big dreamer. Um, <laughs> There are people in my family who call me jo Joseph because I have a bunch of dreams and I like, you know, dreaming big and trying to execute my dreams. But I know sometimes in life we have big dreams, but um, our dreams don't always come out how we expected it to. Have you ever felt like that? You're like, God, oh, you showed me this dream and you showed me this plan and, Lord, what's going on? Okay, this is supposed to be happening right now. You told me this, but... Uh, everything is not working out like it's supposed to be. Have you ever been there? <laughs> I know I've been there. Uh, I, I, God has showed me his plan for me. I've received the visions and I was, you know, going the way I expected him to take me. And eventually everything just began to fall. I've been there. And also Joseph, he has been there. As we know, Joseph had great dreams. God showed him a lot of things. God showed him that through, that through well, he didn't really receive that revelation, but the dreams that he received were great dreams in such a way that he would eventually liberate his people. But Joseph had to go through a period of suffering before he was exalted to a place of greatness. And sometimes in life, God allows his children, his people, to go through a period of suffering before he takes us to a place of greatness. And Joseph, Joseph was the eleventh son of Jacob, the first son of Rachel, the fine honey that Jacob loved. The Bible said that Jacob loved Rachel. He loved Rachel even more than he loved Leah. And what happened was that Leah, were having, she was having kids before Rachel had any children. And that was something that was frowned upon back then. If, if you are a mother, if you're a dad, and, and you don't have any children, you know, it's basically, you might as well give up on that. You have no one to give you inheritance to. But Rachel prayed before God and asked God for a son. She asked God to, 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 to touch her, her womb, and God answered her prayer, and God gave her Joseph. And she named him, as we know, Joseph, which means Jehovah, Yahweh will act. Yahweh will add unto me another son. But Joseph's name also was very significant to the nation of Israel because God would also add unto Joseph so he could get to a place where he would deliver his people. So, as we know, Joseph, as I said, was the 11th son of Jacob. And there was a time when Joseph was around the age of 17, he went out to the fields with his brothers. Je Joseph went with the brothers of, of the seven wives of, of Jacob, and they were supposed to tend to the sheep and tend to the crops. So now Joseph, Joseph was a daddy's boy. Have you ever had siblings who were favored by your, your mom or your dad? You know that feeling. It seems like you're together with everything. It seems like if they're spoiled. That was, that was Joseph, he was a daddy's boy. His dad really, really loved him and favored him. Why? Because he was the first son of the woman that he loved the most, Rachel. So now you can just imagine his, his brothers. Like, what, what's going on? We, we're older than he is, and he's getting all this favoritism. Jacob is showing him all this love. Jacob even bought, gave him a coat. J Jacob made a special coat for Joseph. And that coat signified how much Jacob loved Joseph. And because of this, his brothers began to get very, very, very jealous of him. So one time they went out to the fields and they were doing what they were not supposed to do. And Joseph snitched upon them. He told his dad that they were doing things that they weren't supposed to do. And as a result, his brothers hated him, hated him even more. And Joseph, instead of you know, being around his brothers and being on the down low and, and be, being silent, 
Joseph still continued to tell Jacob everything that they were doing. And I can just imagine how they were looking at Joseph, thinking, I can't stand it. He just thinks he's all that and a bag of chips. <laughs> it's not fair that he's the youngest, but he receives special treatment. But guess what? Favor is not fair. Favor is not fair. And Joseph represents Christ and the children of Christ who are loved by God. Christ is the only begotten son who was beloved by God the Father. And as we all know, he was sent to earth to redeem us. So now, we are able to be a part of the family of God and we can also receive the same type of special treatment that Joseph received. Because what? We are God's children. So when we are favored by God, sometimes it causes others to despise and hate us, just like Joseph's brother despised him because of the favor he was shown by Jacob. So let's transition to, to Genesis 37. Let's try and infer a bit from the story. Joseph was probably already, well, he probably already knew that his brothers didn't like him because of how they probably treated him. And he was favored by his dad. Instead of just, you know what, just doing what they said and just being, you know, trying to be a cool little brother, he continued to tell Joseph what they were doing in the fields. So one time, Jacob sent his, his son out to the fields, and as we know, Joseph was wearing that special coat, and he told Joseph, Joseph, go and check up on your brothers. Go and see what they're doing. So I can just imagine Joseph just skipping to the field <laughs> with his coat, and he just, look at my coat. It looks so, so nice. I can just imagine him doing that. And from a distance, his brothers saw him, and they was like, look at that, look at that, look at that. That old snitch. And, and I know, when I was growing up, I know snitches, they had the saying, Stitches, snitches get stitches. <laughs> in my, growing up in my, in my high school, people used to beat on snitches. People used to mock snitches. No one wanted to hang around snitches. So you can imagine how Joseph's brothers felt. They didn't want to be around him. Who wants to be around a snitch? So anyway, they, they started to, de, 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 um, to come up with a plan. And they, they thought about killing Joseph, but one of the, the brothers, and I think it was Reuben, the, he, he tried to talk them out of killing Joseph. So they said, you know what, we're not gonna kill him. We're just gonna beat him up, we're just gonna mock him, we're just gonna take away that coat and mess up the coat. And that's what they did. They, they took his coat away from him, they mocked him, they began to rip his coat up, and they did all these bad things to him. They even threw him into a, a deep pit where, where the, the scripture says that that pit was empty. It, it didn't have any water. And, 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 and this is also significant in such a way because Christ was also despised and mocked for our sake. Christ suffered humility so that we can be redeemed, so that we can be delivered, just like Joseph. And what made it even worse is that Joseph received a dream. The Bible says that Joseph received two dreams. And the interpretation of those dreams were that Joseph would eventually become or be, be set in a place where he would reign over his brothers, but not only his brothers, that he would also reign over his mother and his dad. And that was something that was very unheard of back then. That is just like Joseph spitting in his brother's face telling them that he was going to reign over them. And sometimes in life, we, we have to be so very careful who we tell our dreams. Because Joseph thought that his brothers loved him, which he had a right to think that. But really and truly, his brothers despised him. But in life, we have to be so very careful who we tell our dreams, because even the people close to us who we think will care about us and be excited with us, those are the ones who will begin to try and pull us down and, to, and they will dip, despise us for the dream that God has given us. And that's what happened to Joseph. So as a result, Joseph was sold into to slavery. He was sold into the hands of the Midianites, just as Christ was sold over to the Gentiles on our behalf. So we see within the soul that Joseph is a type of Christ. But 
even though Joseph was going through a dark period in his life, the scripture said that God was still with Joseph. God was still with Joseph. God still favored Joseph. And even though sometimes we may go through disappointments, we may be betrayed by the people who are close to us, we may be mocked because of our witness, God is still with us, even during our disappointment. But the story did not end there. Joseph was sold into the hands of, of Potiphar, and while he was in the, the, the house of Potiphar, God favored him so much that Potiphar placed Joseph over everything that he had. He placed Joseph over everything. Potiphar didn't think about anything. The only thing Potiphar thought about was what he would eat. But during this time when it seemed like everything was getting better, it seems like if Joseph was on the rise, there was a setback. There was a setback in Potiphar's wife. She saw who Joseph was. She saw that Joseph was probably a very handsome, very fine young man, and she set her, her eyes upon Joseph. But being a, a, a godly and an upright man who he was, Joseph did not sleep with, with Potiphar's wife. Joseph rejected Potiphar's wife. And you, you can begin to imagine how she felt. She was probably embarrassed because she's Potiphar's wife. How, how can you reject me? And as a result, she lied to Potiphar and told Potiphar that Joseph tried to rape her. So, so you can just begin to imagine how, how Joseph felt. Joseph probably felt betrayed. Joseph being someone who, who's, who's innocent and who's upright, but he was sent to jail for something that he did not do. He was sent to prison for something that he did not do, just like Christ. Christ was innocent, he was blameless, he was spotless, but yet still, he died as an innocent man just for us. Just for us. And, and I, I can just imagine Joseph being in the prison wondering, God, what is really going on? You gave me these dreams and I, I, I saw this plan and, and everything seemed so right. I was favored by my dad. I was in a good place where, where I was prospering. But now I am in this prison. But Jacob, sorry, but Joseph didn't allow his disappointment to keep him from ministering to others. Yeah. One day, there came a time when Pharaoh got upset with two of his servants, his head cup bearer and his chief baker. And for some reason, he sent them into the prison. And while they were there, they received dreams. And Joseph, being a man of discernment, recognized that they were going through something. If Joseph was so caught up about what he was going through, he would not be able to recognize that something was wrong with them. And sometimes we get so caught up with our disappointment that we, we cannot recognize that God has given us opportunities to minister to others. But Joseph capitalized on that opportunity and he began to minister to them. He asked them, why are you so cast down? Why are you so distraught? And they began to tell Joseph about their dreams. And Joseph, being the man of God that he is, interpreted the dreams for the two men. And as we know that the interpretation was this, that the, the, one, the, the, the cup bearer, the head cup bearer, that he would one day be restored to his rightful position and the chief baker that he would eventually be persecuted or executed. And we see that also with Christ. Christ was at a place, even on the cross, where he took the opportunity to, to minister to one of the thieves that was on the cross. And Christ is a great example for us that we should take every opportunity to do so, even when we are at, at, in a place of disappointment. So after Joseph interpreted the dreams, everything that Joseph said would happen, happened, just like he said. And I can just see Joseph right now, you know, wanting to get out of prison, knowing that he didn't do anything wrong, just getting closer to, to the cupbearer saying, when you go to Pharaoh, tell Pharaoh about me. Please remember me. But the Bible says that the cupbearer did not remember Joseph. So I can just imagine Joseph is wondering, what is going on? I'm doing everything that I know to do, and I'm doing it right. 
but yet still nothing is happening. I'm not getting any breakthrough. But that was not the set time for Joseph. That was not the set time for Joseph to go before Pharaoh. Everything that was happening until then, God was setting the stage for Joseph to be in Pharaoh's house. God was setting the stage. God allowed Joseph to be sold into slavery by his brothers. God allowed Potiphar to send Joseph to prison. All of that was leading up so that Joseph could interpret uh, the, the cupbearer's dream. And so that the cupbearer would tell Pharaoh about Joseph, so that Joseph would end up in Pharaoh's house and that he would eventually deliver his people. So everything that Joseph was going through, all his disappointment, all his suffering, it was all a part of the process and the plan of God. But Joseph had to wait on the set time of God. If he missed that set time, he would not have gotten that opportunity to go to Pharaoh's house. So as we know, as the, as the story concludes, that Joseph eventually interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Pharaoh had two dreams that he called for an interpreter, and no one in the land was able to interpret the dreams. And then, the Bible says, the head cup bearer, he remembered Joseph at the set time. And he told Pharaoh about Joseph. And Joseph was able to deliver his people because he was there at the right place at the right time to interpret Pharaoh's dream. And Pharaoh placed him over everything which would lead to the deliverance of his people. Which shows us that God sometimes takes us to a period of suffering, to low places in our life before he exalts us to a place of greatness. But when he exalts us to a place of greatness, it is not for ourselves. It is to help us to deliver others so that they can be at the place to have faith in Jesus Christ and to be liberated. Let us pray. The kind of Heavenly Father, we just truly thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your love. And we're so thankful that you are our brother in our times of suffering. We're thankful that we, we have the knowledge that even when we're going through disappointment, persecution, and suffering, that God, you are with us. And you have promised that you will always be with us, even unto the end of the age. We, thank, we are thankful for every dream that you have given everyone in here. And I pray that your will may be done, that your plan and your purpose will be fulfilled in their life. That even in the times of disappointments, that they will, be, that they will know that you are there and they, they, that they will continue to be faithful and to continue to do the work that you have called them to, that they will continue to minister to people. I pray that you will bless them and that your anointing will be upon them and that your will may be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.